Hey everyone, it's Stacy. Today we're going to be making this really cute Christmas stocking and you can find the supplies list and the pattern in the description below. And if you found my tutorial useful today, it would be amazing if you could hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications every time I do a new video. But for now, let's get sewing. So the first thing we need to do is make up our pattern and you can find a free copy of this over on my website. The link is below and it's six pages. It goes A, B, C, D, E, F. And that's how they need to be sellotaped together. And you can kind of see the stocking shape there. But what we need to do is cut off some of this excess because what we're going to do is line them up so the lines of the patterns match up and also so we get diamond shapes. So if I do this one first, we just need to cut one side and I'm going to line up my ruler on the edge of where the lines end and just draw a line. And then I'll cut that off with my scissors. And then what I'll do is I'm going to line it up so that I get the V's and the diamond all lined up, including the pattern. And then once it looks pretty good, I'm going to sellotape it in place. Then I'm going to cut these two bottom pieces so I can line them up and I'll also cut this side to line up those and so on until I've got my whole pattern cut and ready to go. So once I've stuck my shape together, I'm now going to cut around the outline of my stocking so I've got my template all ready and done. So now I've got my template ready to go. Another option would be if you've got a Christmas stocking already, you could trace around the outline of it to make your own pattern. Just remember to allow a quarter of an inch seam allowance around the whole edge. But now we've got this, let's start making our Christmas stocking. So now I've got 28 three and a half inch squares and you could make these up with however many fabrics you would like. You could use scrap fabric, just whatever you like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place them in the order that we're going to sew them in. And you might need to shuffle yours around a bit, but we're going to have three on our top row, then three on the second row, three on the third row, then the fourth row is four, and then the last three rows are five across. Now I've got them in the order that I would like to sew them in. You might have to shuffle yours around until you're happy. And what we're going to do now is we're going to chain piece them together. So now we're going to sew our squares together and we're going to start with the two left hand side columns. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carefully fold them on top. And we'll sew them together like that. And I'm just going to be careful not to bump any of the other squares because they're all in the order that I'd like to sew them in. Then I'm going to take the top one. I'm going to make sure all the edges are lined up nicely. And if you'd like to, you could pop a pin in. I don't think it ever hurts to be using pins just to make sure it's staying in place when we're sewing it. So we've lined up the edges of the corners and the edge of the fabric along here. And then we're just going to sew with my quarter inch foot and I'm going to stitch at stitch length too. I've checked my sewing machine is stitching nicely and I'm not going to do a back stitch. I'm just going to go straight across. And what I'm going to do is once I've made sure I'm well past the edge of my fabric, I'm going to take the next pair 
I'm going to make sure the edges are all lined up nicely. I'm going to pop a pin in on this edge because this is the edge we're sewing them together. I'll just lift my foot up and start it right where, right before my needle and then I'll stitch those two together. I'll come right past the edge. Then I'll take my next pair, make sure the edges and the corners are lined up again. We'll just pop a pin in on the side that I'm sewing, on this right hand side. Lift up my foot and sew. And I'll repeat this process until I've sewn those two columns together. Now I've just realized that I've got two here and this is a directional fabric and it was facing the wrong way so I'm just correcting that now. If you've got any directional fabric just make sure it is facing up the right way. So now I've finished sewing those two columns together I'm going to sew the next column together so what I'll do is I'll open it up and then I'll take my next piece, face it down, right sides together, making sure that it is sitting in the correct directional position. Line up those edges, pin and sew, and I'll repeat that process until I've done this whole next column. Okay, so once I've finished sewing that column on, I'm going to come down to number four of my row. So this is row one, two, three, four. Then I'm going to open that one up and then I'm going to sew this column on, starting at row four. So right sides together, lining up all those edges and sewing. And if you'd like to, pinning. Then we'll attach the last column and that's the last three on the bottom. Lining up those edges and sewing just like we did all the others. Okay, so once we've sewn all our squares together, let's press. So now I've got all my pieces here sewn together and they're loosely attached because we chain pieced them. Now what we need to do is make sure that the seams are either going up or down so we can nest them nicely. So I'm going to start with this first column here and I'm going to make sure all my seams are facing up away from me. And I like to do it with the fabric facing me. I like to feel it, give it a finger press and then press. And then that way I can make sure there's no little creases in here where it joins. So I'll do the next one finger press, press, and because these seams are going up, these ones now need to go down. So I can feel that that's facing the right way. And this one is, and then I'm going to continue on, on all my columns here. These seams are gonna go up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So once we've finished pressing, let's finish sewing them together. So now what I'm going to do is take these two rows and I'm going to fold them with the right sides together and I'm going to nest the seams. So that means that I'm finding the seams. One will be folded over and going this way. One will be folded over and going this way. I'm going to push them up together so they can't go any further against each other. And then I will pin them in place, making sure these edges are all lined up nicely. And I'll do that for every seam along the way. Then when I've nested all those seams, I'm going to sew along the edge with my quarter inch foot. Then 
Then I'm going to repeat that for the rest of the rows. So now we're just going to press the seams on our Christmas stocking top. And it doesn't matter which way they go, we just want them sitting nicely. Finger pressing and pressing. And I'll do that for all of my seams and then I'll give the whole top a press and I'll cut off any loose threads. So now we need to baste it like it's a little quilt. So I've got my backing fabric here and if this was patterned I'd have the right side facing down onto my table. Then I've got batting and then I've got my Christmas stocking top here. And I'm just going to pop a few pins in just to keep it in place for when I am quilting it. We don't need to use too many. And bear in mind where you plan to quilt it. I'm going to do stitch in the ditch because I don't want to take away from all my pretty fabrics. You might want to do the echoing technique, which is where you'd sew down either side of the seam. Or you might want to do an entirely different pattern and that's up to you. It's only little, so I don't need to use too many pins. Okay, not sure that I remembered to say that make sure the top's all smoothed out nicely. So now I'm going to quilt that. You could use your standard foot or your walking foot. Because it's only little, we shouldn't have too much trouble. Just use whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay, so like I said before, I'm going to do stitch in the ditch, so I'll do that along all my seams. You can do whatever you'd like. I've decided to put my walking foot on and I'm stitching at stitch length 2.5. So I'll just stitch right to the edges of all the sides. So I finished quilting and I've given it a press so that it's sitting nice and flat. Then I'm going to take the fabric that's my backing for my stocking and I'm going to place that on top with the right side facing down, the wrong side facing me. And then I'm going to take my template and pop it on top. And now we're going to cut out our shape. So what I want to do is make sure that the template is sitting within the nice squares that I've sewn together. I don't want to have it over here, in which case I'd be missing part of it. Now my fabric is a little bit see-through, so it's easy for me. If you can't see through yours, maybe you want to do this in two steps. You could cut this piece first and then the backing. But for me, seems as I can see through it, I'm going to cut it all in one go. So I'm going to place my template on top, making sure that it is sitting in fact within my sewing piece at the bottom. And when I'm happy, I'm going to pin that in place. And then I'll pin all the way around. So once I've pinned my template in place, I did make sure that it was sitting nice and smoothly. Mine was sort of a bit wrinkled at the bottom here, so I did take the pins out and repin it. So once you're happy, and you could just check that it is sitting within your sewed squares. Once you're happy, let's cut out our stocking shape. Then once I've cut out my Christmas stocking template, I'm just going to take the pins out. I'm going to take my template off and then I'm going to pin around the edges again. And then it's all ready to sew. Now we'll sew. So now I'm just going to stitch all the way around the edge, starting at the top right hand side, coming all the way around to this other side and leaving my opening open. I'm going to use my quarter inch foot and I'm stitching at stitch length two. And I will do a back stitch. And 
then I'll pop my hand in, grab the toe and pull it right sides out. Straighten it up and then let's give it a press so it's sitting really nicely. So I'm just going to give it a quick press so it's sitting really nicely. We are going to turn it wrong side out again, but I just wanted to make sure it's sitting really nicely before we sew the cuff on. So I'm just going to check these seams here and roll them out and then give them a press so it's sitting really nicely. And then here you can see why it's so critical to do this. If we never bothered to iron it, it just would never really sit nicely. So just rolling out those seams and giving it a press. So now we're going to make and attach our cuff. This piece is 17 and a half inches by eight inches. And how I came up with that measurement, in case it's not quite right for yours, is this across is eight and a half inches. So I times that by two and I added on half an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the right sides together and then I'm just going to sew along the short, shorter edge here. So I'm gonna line up my edges, line up my corners, I will just pop a pin in to keep it in place. So now I'm just going to stitch along that edge. I'm going to use my quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to stitch at 2.5. Then we're just going to give that a quick press. So I'm just going to turn it right sides out. And I just want to come along on this seam, make sure that the seam is facing one way, it doesn't matter if it's going up or down. Give it a finger press and just press it so it's sitting really nicely. Then while I'm at my iron, I'm just going to press my little hoop that we're going to make. So this is 7 inches by 2 inches, so I'm going to face it with the wrong side facing me. I'm going to fold it in half and give it a finger press. And I'll press that. Then I'm going to open it up and what I'll do is I'm going to fold this edge in to where I can see my creases. Then I'll give that a finger press and press. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm folding it into that middle crease. Then I'll fold both pieces in, fold it back in half, and I should have my little loop there. And then what I'm going to do is just place a couple of pins in, just to hold it in place. Okay, so back to the sewing machine. So now I'm just going to stitch my loop shut. So I was calling it a hoop earlier. I don't know why I was calling it that. And I've put my standard foot on and I'm going to stitch it at about a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Just cut those loose, loose threads. Now let's attach our cuff and our loop to our Christmas stocking. So now I've got my cuff here, what I'm going to do is just fold it in half so the right sides are facing me, but lining up those two edges. So we're going to have the two edges all lined up nicely on this side and on this side will be our fold. So all we need to be worrying about is that these edges are lined up. Now I'm gonna take my cuff and I'm gonna put it over my Christmas stocking. I've turned my Christmas stocking wrong side out again, and I'm gonna take my cuff with my seam so it's sitting in the middle at the back, and I'm gonna place that over the top of my stocking. I'm gonna have that seam sitting right in the middle at the back. And then what I want to do is line up all the edges. So I'm taking my Christmas stocking and lining up the edges with the edge of my cuff here and making sure it's just all sitting nicely. 
And then once I'm happy that my seam's at the back and it's sitting nicely, I will pin it. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm pinning the front of my Christmas stocking to the cuff. And then when I come to the side, I want the seams from the Christmas stocking to go towards the back. And I'll pin that in place. I'll find the other seam and I'm going to make sure that's sitting towards the back. And I'll pin that. So I'm making sure all the edges are lined up. Then I'll do the same at the back. And you could put in a few extra pins if you'd like. And lastly, I'm going to take my loop, fold it in half so the two edges are lined up. I'm going to take my Christmas stocking and make sure that I've got it so that it's the toe is coming towards the right. So I'm going to put my loop on this side, the left hand side. I'm going to take my loop and pop it in between the cuff and the back of my Christmas stocking. And I'm going to put it right up next to the seams and I'm going to line up those edges. If anything, I'd rather it hanging out a little bit more than it needed to rather than going down in too far because we definitely want to make sure we catch it when we're sewing. And then once I've got that in place, I'm going to pin it. And now let's finish sewing our Christmas stocking. So I've put my quarter inch foot back on. I'm stitching at stitch length 2.5 and what I need to do is sew it really carefully. So I'm only sewing this edge and not accidentally catching the underneath edge. But if you have a free arm, this is when you use it. So we just take that bit off. And now my stocking fits on my arm there. So what I'm going to do is start at the back on my seam. I will do a back stitch. You might have wanted to use your walking foot, it's just whatever you prefer. We are sewing through a few layers of fabric. And I'm just sewing over my loop now, so I am going to go right over it and past it, and then I will do a back stitch right back over it to make it nice and secure and then I'll just carry on to finish. And now I'm back where I started, I will just do a back stitch again. And now let's cut those loose threads. I'm going to turn it right sides out. So I'll just turn it right sides out. I'll pop my hand right into the toe and grab it. Get it all sitting nicely again. Then I'm going to fold over this cuff. And if you haven't already guessed, we're going to press it one last time. So I'm just going to check my cuff now and make sure that that seam's sitting really nicely and rolling it out, giving it a finger press and pressing. And then I'm just going to give the whole stocking a quick press so it's looking really nice and tidy. And if I was to change anything, I probably would have made sure when I sewed my loop on that these stitches were sitting to the left. It's just a personal preference. And also you could make that however long or short you'd like, depending on where you're wanting to hang it. But for now, I think we're finished. And I'm really happy with that. What do you think? Okay, everyone, now we've finished our Christmas stocking. I hope you enjoyed that. One thing to remember is that you could make the Christmas stocking top however you want. 
You've got the template. So what you could do is you could just make it in one complete piece. You could get two and a half inch strips, sew them together, and then use my template to cut out the shape just like you did with the squares. Really, you could do anything you want. And you could also personalize it at the top here. You could do an applique name, you could embroider it, you could just do anything you want to personalize it. Thank you for joining me and if you found this tutorial helpful it would be amazing if you could hit the like button so I know you enjoyed it. Thanks guys! Thank you for watching my videos. If you're enjoying them please like, subscribe and leave a comment.